Aloha everyone, Kimo here and welcome to my channel Kimo Craft. In today's video, I'm going to show you three different Dollar Tree Halloween DIYs that are inspired by the color scheme of one of my favorite Halloween treats, candy corn. So without further ado, let's hop right into our very first Halloween DIY today. This Halloween, give everyone you know a cute little scare with these boo houses with skeleton. All items here are from Dollar Tree, starting out with these wooden frame homes that I got sometime last year. I'm using some white chalk paint to brighten things up a little bit and to provide a base coat on the back of our house frames. You can see here that I'm just carefully outlining around the perimeter of those frames and then eventually I'll put on two coats of this white chalk paint to make sure that there's great coverage. And I wanted to give a quick shout out to all of my subscribers out there. Thank you so much for your love and support. And if you're liking what you see so far, please like this video. Consider subscribing to my channel to get more content about arts and crafts, home decor, and other DIY ideas on the cheap. Once we have that base coat with the two layers of that white chalk paint, I'm going to go in with the different colors of candy corn, starting here with our orange acrylic paint. I love the idea of using candy corn as an inspiration for my color scheme here because it's classic Halloween and it's also bright and cheery. Now I'm going to create a template to create those wire letters that spell out boo. So I'm just tracing out the outlines of each of those house frames onto some paper, and then I'm going to draw out the letters B, O, O. Now, I love this little garland that you get from Dollar Tree. It's actually made out of wire, and I love these cute little orange berries, I guess you could say on top of it, but it looks like it's a vine, which is gonna be really helpful for this project, and the wire makes this, uh, pretty sturdy to create some letters out of it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to cut out a section uh, of this uh, garland and I'm going to twist it upon itself to make sure that it's really super sturdy. So you can see here that we're just twisting and twisting and twisting and then after that's done, we're going to shape this vine or this garland into our letter. In this case, we're creating the letter O. The O is pretty easy. The B will be a little bit more challenging, but we're using the same technique here. We cut out a section again of that wire garland and we're going to twist it and twist it and twist it upon itself. And after that's done, we're going to shape that garland into the shape of the letter B. The advantage of working with this wire is that it becomes pretty easy to shape into these letters. Here you can see that I'm just looping that B around to create that contact point right in the middle and just kind of adjusting a little bit so that it truly looks like the letter B. And then lastly, we're going to work on another O. This one is a little bit more elongated to fit into the shape of that house frame. So after a while, we have our three letters, B, O, O. Now we're going to return to the house frames themselves, and I decided to add a little bit of distressing around the perimeter of these house frames to give a bit of dimension. And everyone, of course, has their own distressing preference. I tend to be, I guess, a light distresser. I like typically a little bit of some age and some wear and tear, but not a ton. And for this particular project, I did want to preserve the brightness and the lightness of those three colors. Now with our letters complete and with everything painted and distressed appropriately, I'm now going to simply add those letters B O O to the house frames using a little bit of hot glue. And one tip on the hot glue, I didn't put hot glue everywhere. I really just tried to focus on the contact areas. In other words, the areas where the garland would hit the backs of those frames. That way I could limit the amount of oozing and sort of this uh, over usage of the hot glue. Thank you. 
and those letters are looking really lovely, but I thought that we still needed one more element to make this Boo Trio complete. And so I went to the one of those Dollar Tree skeletons. These come in a set of four in a pack, and I decided to sort of um, manipulate that little skeleton as much as possible to create a little bit of visual interest in that second frame. So you may have seen something similar in my last Halloween video where I took that skeleton and I just started to bend at the joints a little bit on the knees, on the elbows, on the shoulders to kind of create a new position for that skeleton. And it actually worked without uh, breaking too much of those skeleton limbs off. So I kind of gently bended where I needed to to create a sitting position for our skeleton. And then I glued on the limbs or the hands to the appropriate places to make sure that I had the pose just right. And every now and then I added a little bit of hot glue to the joints as well to make sure that they stuck in their new position. And now I'm gonna use some hot glue to attach the skeleton to our house frame. And you can see here that I'm adding hot glue to the contact points. In other words, where that skeleton or the back of the skeleton will meet the frame. Super, super cute, but we're not quite all the way done. I'm just going to do a little bit of touch up using some antique wax in the color brown. And you can see here that I've just uh, taken a little toothpick and I'm adding some of that antique wax to areas like the eyes of the skeleton, also using it to cover up a little bit of where the, the hot glue might be showing or on the joints where you can see some of that bend and the plastic coming through. But after that, here's our final result. I think overall this project has a pretty traditional but modern feel to it. Maybe like a modern farmhouse almost kind of effect. I love the organic feel that I get from these uh, vine letters. And also that cute little skeleton just brings home that message. What do you think? I've been so impressed with some of the things that I've seen at Dollar Tree for Halloween, my favorite season. And I saw these little wooden laser cut boxes that are candle holders, and I couldn't resist getting three of them. Now, when you turn these boxes over to the back, there's this removable part where you can slide in your little votive candle. And I love that. And I love the shape already of these, uh, but I thought that I could kind of play with the color a little bit, again, using candy corn as my color inspiration. So I'm taking out each of those three backings and putting them to the side because we're going to add some color to them later. But in the meantime, I'm going to add the colors of the candy corn, which would be white, orange, and yellow to the surfaces, to the very fronts of each of these wooden boxes. And you can see here that I'm actually using my foam brush and I'm dabbing on the paint just up and down, not doing any brush strokes side to side because I only wanted these bright colors on the very front of these wood boxes and I didn't want any of that paint to kind of seep in or leak to the sides of that beautiful laser cut. Now, I absolutely love color, and if you follow me, then you would probably know that. But I'm wondering, what are your favorite Halloween colors? Let me know in a comment down below. I wanted to give a little bit of height to our candle holders, and so I got some of these items from the catering section over at Dollar Tree, and we're going to spray paint those a little bit later. But first, we're going to go back to those little wood backings from our candle holder boxes, and I'm going to spray them with some copper metallic spray paint. Now, while I'm using some metallic copper spray paint to paint the backings of these uh, wooden boxes, I'm going to switch now to a hammered copper spray paint to paint the bases of our project. I ended up doing a couple of coats of this hammered copper spray paint and it resulted in this really cool glittery kind of finish that I wasn't expecting. 
And now it's time to assemble everything. I've got our copper spray painted bases here and I'm just going to attach them to the wooden boxes using a generous amount of hot glue. Now it's time to stick in our little votive candles into each of our wooden boxes and then we're simply going to close it up using that little flap that we spray painted earlier with that copper metallic spray paint. And before you know it, here is our final result with all three candle boxes. Okay, you guys, how cute are these little wooden candle holder boxes? And how simple was this project? All we needed was the right materials, a little bit of color, and bam, you've got a beautiful and simple Halloween candle holder display. What do you think? Creating candle sleeves for LED candles is a great way to add some color and texture for the Halloween season. I love having LED candles on hand because you can use them for all kinds of decorating for really all sorts of seasons and holidays. So I decided to make these LED candles a little bit more fall by creating some sleeves for them. So for that I'm simply going to take some copy paper and I'm going to cut it down to the right size. Now I suppose that I could have covered the entire candle, but I just decided to go for a strip of paper that would cover the bottom third or so of our candle. Here, using some tape, I'm just going to simply fold over that paper and tape it to itself. These lovely autumn leaves come from Dollar Tree. They come in a pack, they're made out of plastic and I used them for a previous craft in another video. Had some leftover that I thought that I would use for this project. And since today we are inspired by our candy corn color scheme, I'm going to start gluing the lighter leaves, the yellow leaves, to the top third or so of that paper. Once the first row is complete, I'm going down a level to attach some slightly darker autumn leaves to our paper. And we're also going to add the third bottom layer here using even darker leaves, creating this ombre effect. And since we had some leaves left over, I decided to make a second candle. The leaves that I chose were slightly different than for the first one just because we had different leaves left over, but I still followed that sort of ombre color scheme using again candy corn as my color inspiration. And I decided to finish off with a little bit of this faux leather ribbon from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to use it to line the bottom there to kind of make sure that we have a nice clean edge. And we are going to do the same thing with the other LED candle, just hot gluing that little faux leather ribbon to the bottom of that candle. And although we are focusing on autumn and Halloween for this video, you can certainly use this idea of creating candle sleeves for other occasions and holidays. So for example, on Valentine's Day, instead of using autumn leaves, you can use those rose petals that you can find in the wedding section at Dollar Tree. And after a few final touches, here is our final result. I have my two LED candles on different settings. One is just the regular white light and then the other is an orange light so that you can see the difference here. This really is such a fun and simple way to add some decor to already existing LED candles that you probably have in your stash. I love that this says Halloween, but it could say any occasion that your heart desires. 
Mahalo so much for joining me today. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell to get notified every time I upload a new video to my channel. And I will see you next time. Happy Halloween!